Welcome to this uh, next video on derivatives. I'm Darshan Santal and thank you for joining me. So today we're going to be talking about the product and quotient rules. Just a couple more rules to help us uh, learn to take more derivatives. So the product rule, the der derivative of f of x times g of x. This is as follows. So it's d dx of f of x times g of x plus d of x times f of x, right? So that's our product rule right there. So you may want to write this down because you're going to need to uh, commit it in memory. Then next we have our quotient rule, which is a little bit more complicating, but um, here it is. So the derivative of that is equal to d dx of f of x times g of x minus d dx of g of x times f of x all over g of x squared. So that's our quotient rule right there, right? So that's basically what we use to go ahead and solve for quotients. Now, if you're not a fan of the quotient rule, what you can do is you can rewrite this as d dx of f of x times g of x to the negative one. And then this just becomes a product rule. So if you're a fan of the product rule, you can do something like this. But honestly, sometimes it's just easier to go ahead and do a quotient rule. So you should know both, but this is just something that is, uh, you know, handy to know. Some quick examples just to make sure we solidify these concepts. So in this case, dy dx would equal the derivative of 3x times sine of x plus the derivative of sine of x times 3x. Okay, so now it's just two pretty easy pieces. So the derivative of 3x is 3, so that would be 3 sine of x plus the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x, so this would just be 3x cosine of x. And there you are, that's our answer. And next one over here, this is 3e to the x times x plus 1. So we're going to actually use a little jingle that I uh, learned, which is <laughs> pretty convenient for memorizing the, product, the quotient rule. So dy dx is going to equal low, which is the lower function, d high, the derivative of the upper function, minus high, 3e to the x, the high upper function, d low, the derivative of the lower function, all over low squared. Okay, so low, the lower function, d high, the derivative of the upper function, minus high, the upper, upper function, times the derivative of the lower function, all over low squared. So low d high minus high d low, all over low squared. So that's just a, a fun way to remember it, uh, if, you, if it helps you. So let's just go ahead and evaluate this now. So this would be the derivative of 3e e to the x is 3e e to the x. So this would be 3e e to the x, x plus 1, minus 3e e to the x. The derivative of x plus 1 is just 1, so we don't even need to, we don't need to think about that all over x plus 1 squared. Now we can simplify this just a little bit. So if we we take out a 3e to the x, we get x plus 1 minus 1, or x plus 1 squared. And these two are going to cancel, so you'd be left with 3e to the x over x plus 1 squared, actually x times 3e to the x, but you get the picture. So that would be your final answer, but honestly, you could stop here and most people would still give you the points. Now, here's another final example, but again, before you go ahead and use the product rule, 
Let's just go ahead and take a close look at this. Sine of x times the cotangent of x. Well, what is the cotangent? The cotangent is basically cosine of x over sine of x, right? Times sine of x. That's what we have here. Now, because we, we if just by rewriting this, we can go ahead and eliminate both the signs, and we've essentially eliminated the product here. So, really, which is we're just taking the de the derivative of y equals cosine of x, and that's a very very simple derivative, dy dx equals negative sine of x. And again, never forget the negative. If you do, it will ruin your life. dy dx equals negative sine of x, and there you are. That's a much easier derivative than you would have had to calculate otherwise. So you probably can't read that, but what I'm saying there is if you can avoid using the product or quotient rule by simplifying, then go for it. Don't, don't, you don't have to use the product or quotient rule. Just like you don't have to use the definition of the derivative to find the derivative, you don't have to use the product and quotient rule because granted they are convenient and they let you do things that you may otherwise not be able to do with your derivatives they are still a little bit tedious so if you can avoid using them then that's brilliant go for it all right so just always keep that in mind always keep that in mind now you may ask the question what about constants so if i have a constant like three times this thing do i need to use the product rule on that well that's we we haven't been doing that so far. So we may be asking, what well, are you teaching me something wrong? Well, I'm really not. Let's let me show you what what actually happens. Let's go ahead and use the product rule on this and let's see what happens. So you would have d d x of x squared minus four x plus five times three plus d d x of 3 times x squared minus 4x plus 5. So the derivative of this is simply going to equal 2x minus 4 all times 3. But what is more, more significantly than what this is, what is the derivative of all this going to equal out to? If you really think about it, the derivative of 3 is just going to be 0, right? Because 3, zero, 3 is a constant. It doesn't have a rate of change, or its rate of change is 0. So therefore, this is all just going to be equal out to 0. So all this is just going to essentially get cancelled out. So you're just left with the, the derivative of your original function times your constant. So it doesn't even matter what this is for the purposes of what we're investigating. Well, the real answer is just 6x minus 12. But the point is... The constant doesn't matter. And why does the constant not matter? So the constant doesn't matter because they they cancel out they their derivatives equal out to zero. The derivative of a constant is going to equal zero. And as you can see here, we can do the product rule, sure, but again the derivative of the second term that you get here is just going to equal out to zero. Alright, so that's why that's why we don't usually use we, we don't have to show our work for the product rule here and we we technically are using the product rule it's just that the second term here is always going to equal out to zero all right so uh yeah that's all that's all i have for this video thank you so much for watching i just i love doing this just to sort of teach what i've learned so please do like this video if it helped you out please share subscribe to my channel that would mean a lot to me and feel free to leave a comment if you uh, appreciate the quality of my work or if there's something I could improve constructive feedback is always appreciated so thank you so much I hope this was helpful and uh, take care